Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 2 of the CNUM project. In this episode, we will explore the diversification of our two multicellular clades from last episode the Tyrophytes and the Protovermus. Before we dive into the animals of this episode, we'll cover the innovations of the Tyrophytes. The first Tyrophytes used a kind of biological cement to secure themselves to the sea floor. However, this method doesn't work well for sandy environments as the sand can just get blown away along with the organism. To combat this issue, one lineage would evolve a system of roots becoming the capriophytes. Capriophyte roots extend outwards perpendicular to the stem and a second set of roots extend downwards parallel to the stem to further anchor them to the sea floor. From the protovermus to lineages emerged, one lineage would forego the benthic lifestyle for a pelagic lifestyle further up in the water column, becoming the ichthyophomus. Because of the drastic change in habitat, they adapted quickly to their new habitat, evolving for the role of an active swimmer. To adapt to the role, they evolved numerous adaptations, like a cartilaginous rod running from their head to the tip of their tail for structure, a simple cardiovascular system, alongside a heart and a brain to process the information coming from their enlarged eye. They are also the first group to evolve blood with red haemoglobin-based blood within special cells. With more complexity comes more time before they can survive on their own. The ichthyovomus have solved this problem with the evolution of the egg. The egg can provide nutrients through the early stages of growth until they are ready to live on their own. The other lineage to arise from the protovermus would remain in their benthic habitat, becoming the noduvermis. The noduvermis have the ability to regenerate any part of their body and can even regenerate their entire body. As long as they still have the head segment, they can do this because their anatomy is very simple. The noduvermis breathe through their skin so that they can only grow as large as the furthest oxygen can travel into their body. The noduvermis grow by adding more segments from behind the head continuing to add segments throughout its life. Over time, the ichthyovermis would adapt to feed on the noduvermis and two strategies emerged. The first of the two lineages would hunt by sucking small prey into its mouth. This lineage would become the serpentivermis. The serpentivermis creates suction by expanding a pouch in their throat, sucking water into their mouth alongside their prey. As they don't need to be fast, the serpentivermis use onguiliform swimming which is the kind eels use for movement. To assist with this method of movement, they have adapted an elongated body and smaller fins. The other lineage of ichthyovomis would adapt to feed by grasping prey with their mouth. This lineage would become the coronodorts. To assist with this, they have evolved a ring of tiny cone-shaped teeth lining their mouth. As the coronodorts have to keep up with their prey, they have adapted to use subcarangiform swimming which is the kind salmon use for movement. Their heart has grown in complexity, as their lifestyle requires better stamina for chasing prey. With the presence of predators, the nodwermis had to adapt or face extinction. Over time, three strategies would emerge, with each strategy leading to a separate lineage. The first lineage would adapt to hide from their predators by burrowing vertically into the sand and become the fossa vermis. The fossa vermis traded their poor sense of sight for an acute sense of touch. Active predators disturbed the water around them, so any change in water pressure will cause them to quickly retreat into their burrow. The fossa vermis sustain themselves by passively feeding on detritus falling from the ocean surface. The second lineage of nodu vermis would adapt to escape their predators. By outrunning them, this lineage would become the plana vermis. The planovermis have adapted for speed by crawling along the sea floor on a motion similar to sidewinder snake. This method of movement requires lots of energy, so the planovermis would become the second group to evolve blood, but this time is in the form of purple hemrytherin based blood, alongside a heart similar to the hearts found on insects. For a smoother body, the planovermis have lost the many segments of their ancestors, and instead the second segment grows longer taking up the majority of their length. Like their burrowing relatives, the planovermis feed on detritus falling from above. The third lineage of noduvermis would adapt to predation by growing to large to prey on becoming the lobovermis. Growing to the sizes, the lobovermis grow too, 
would normally be impossible due to their inefficient respiration method they inherited from the nodu vermis. However, the lobovermis solved this problem by evolving a flattened extension of their body, so oxygen can still reach every part of their body. With this adaptation, the lobovermis could grow to become the largest life form on Knum so far. Now we have reached the end of the second episode of the Knum project. I hope you enjoyed this video as I make these videos to share my interests and creations with the world. Goodbye.